Well, you might know that we've, we built a bench scale reactor uh, many, many years ago. We then scaled it up to make a pilot reactor. Success! We had a brief foray with a barbecue, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. And uh, now we've decided to take it right to the max and build a full-scale plant. The world's largest uh, continuous supercritical plant. So um, with that said, it doesn't roll off the tongue, but uh, you can see a ditch behind us that's uh, uh, taking all the power and utilities into the building that we need to actually go right to full-scale production. We're up against the clock, unfortunately. We've got a few months left to go, and we absolutely have to get this running. So uh, that's a major, major stress. So up there in the corner, we've got a time-lapse camera, which is pretty cool, because that's capturing one image every five seconds, uh, right from when we first took over the property when it was just a blank shell uh, to what we're, what we're building now. We'll start at this end, this pipe here. This is a water pipe. This is going to take uh, our flow, our water flow into the building and then we have to process it. We deionize it. We have to take out all the uh, various components that are in normal water that we don't mind drinking. Otherwise we'll, like a furry kettle, we'll end up with a big problem inside the pipe work. So we take all those uh, bits out of the water which we'll then put in a holding tank, so that's some very, very clean water. It'll be drinkable, but it might taste a bit weird. Then we uh, pumped that water into the rest of the process, which we've got to go around at this side. Okay, this is the control panel, which you can manually control the whole plant, but we won't be doing that. We'll actually be uh, using a control system and everything's gonna be software-based and it'll look super funky. At this stage, these are holding tanks for uh, our chemical precursors. So they will go here and they get pumped up to the top there where they're uh, diluted to the right concentration for, for the process. So they have to be the right concentration, otherwise you make the wrong products. So we have complete control over the way that everything is mixed together to make the right precursor concentrations. If you made a crystal garden at home, you probably use copper sulfate or something like that. So it's highly soluble metal salts. Uh, so we might use copper sulfate, or if we're making, say, iron oxide, we might use copper nitrate. Really soluble metal precursors. They go into water and they don't fight, they just dissolve. So those will go in here, and then we've got to come through this very small gap. So all of this will be encased in uh, bulletproof screening and so on, because this is the pressurized side. Precursor flows straight down uh, here into the pump. Uh, this is where it becomes pressurized. So on this side of the pump heads, we've got pressurized fluid being taken all the way into the reactor. So this, is, this will be under pressure, maybe 240 bar, maybe, it depends on how we run it. And this will then be pumped straight down to the reactor. So this is our reactor, which will obviously be insulated and so on, but we've got cold metal salts being pumped along here. It's being pumped into the system here. And then we've got a reaction, so particles are made there. Supercritical water is being pumped downwards here and uh, you've got the same, same as all the other videos, we've got a pipe in a pipe, and we've got cold metal salt, supercritical water, particles form, product then comes out the outside of this uh, wide tube and out of here. If that's wrong, that's completely my fault. Anything else goes wrong, it's Tony's fault over there. He's the technician who's building this place. We've had the mixing, we've had the particles formed, then this is the outflow uh, here, so the temperature depends on how we run it, but maybe 350 or 400 degrees. So this is quite hot, quite high pressure. And then, in order to make the whole process sustainable and economic, we need to recover the heat. Now, we never did that with the barbecues, we never did it with the pilot rig or the bench reactors, but we need to recover the heat because of the amount of flow that we've got, and it changes the economics a lot. If we just throw the heat away as a waste stream, then that's a bad news. So we recover the heat using these heat exchangers, which are uh, expertly made, high-pressure heat exchangers. Very difficult to, uh, to design, but we've got them. Okay, well that will then go off and uh, we've, we've recovered a lot of the heat. That will then go into this boiler here. This is a monster boiler that we've had specially manufactured and that will take the heat right to the temperature that we want, the target temperature. So that then gets pumped back into the reactor. So we've now got the product. Uh, we've got it at, um, at the right concentrations. We're now wanting to maybe add some surfactants, some additives to make it more stable or to have some function for whatever we're making it for. Uh, but it's quite hot still. Still too hot to collect. It'll still come out of steam if we let the pressure down. So then we've got another heat exchanger here just to take it right down to the, the collection temperature, which would be maybe body temperature. Then we uh, release the pressure just here, and we then uh, 
collect the products in these huge tanks. We're collecting the raw product, which is uh, okay for some things, but we need to process them in other cases. But these tanks will then hold maybe an hour's worth of product flow. So we've gone from maybe a litre an hour to maybe four cubic metres an hour, so that's a pretty big scale up by anyone's stretch. Um, so these will hold process fluids for then processing and then sending off. Uh, these tanks probably will be the, the final stage. Once they're in those tanks, they're probably product. Some of the things that we make um, are bright colours. Some of them are a bit boring, as in they're probably transparent. So silica, completely transparent. Zirconia, totally transparent. But iron oxide's red, that's nice. And then some of the metal organic frameworks that we make, they can be bright blue and, and uh, they have great colours. So depending on what we make, and then obviously we've got strategies for cleaning it all out when we make something new. We're done. Pete! Yeah? Are you ready? <laughs> Missed! <laughs> we've moved up in the world because we, we're, we're not on plastic cups anymore. We're, we're getting more classy with team up. Okay, there we go. It's... Right. Yeah. Two, two.